This video is recorded to help my students to understand how to do Project 8. The Project 8 is designed for students to apply the methods of vector class, CC type library, and string class. Project 8 will solve the following two problems. The first problem, uh, the program will prompt the user to enter a sequence of score from 0 to 100. It will then print out the minimum, maximum, total scores, and the average scores. The second problem, the program will ask the user to enter a sentence. It will then tell the user if the sentence is a paradigm or not. The student will implement the following three help methods plus the main method. First method, void get scores. This will take a, a pass a vector of integer as argument. Notice when you pass a vector as argument, you need to use the call by reference. Then the score from uh, the post condition is scores from 0 to 100 will be assigned to a vector from keyboard. When user into a active value, it means the input process finished. The second method, void print stats. This also pass a vector as argument. This vector, of course, stores the scores uh, inside. Then in this method, they will go through this vector. Uh, that means all the scores in storing this vector. Then find out the maximum score, minimum score, total scores, and average score. Then it will print out the statistics about it. The third function is uh, return your Boolean value. Uh, the function name is paradigm. It take a string as an argument, and this will return true if this sentence is a paradigm and a false otherwise. Now, what is a paradigm? The paradigm is a sentence you read from left to the right or from right to the left will be the same. Notice the line English characters will be ignored. It is also a lot, uh, lot case sensitive. For example, here, a lot for a jar of Tuna. Then, if you read from left, uh, right to the left, you also have a lot for a jar of tuna. So this is a paradigm. Okay. So when we do this, we first design the structure of the program. So you can say you write on the comments, of course, who write, who is the author of this program. Uh, when, uh, what is the version of this program? You can write that when you finish it. So let's say uh, we will do first include. Oh, sorry. Include IO stream. Then you will include string class. Include vector, then we also include CC type. Okay, then we say using namespace std. Now you will first have these three functions. Let me just copy and paste these three functions here. This is three function declaration. Okay. Then I will have a main function. Energy main. Then return zero. Then I will implement this function, get scores. Now, every time you implement it, you implement it, it's, uh, we call it a st st uh, stable first, stable version, which is if it's a void function, you don't need to do anything. If it's a return an integer, you just return zero. Okay, I copy and paste. Then finally, for this one, since it's return a boolean value, you can just return true or false, whatever you want. For example, I return true. Then. Now, if you do this, you can begin 
uh, run your program. Of course, your program will be able to compile, but nothing happened, right? Now, pay attention here. Each function you already implement, it uh, technically is correct because you don't have a syntax error, your program run, but it didn't solve any problem because this function, you didn't really give any uh, useful Im implementation there. So let us implement the main function first. So first step, solve problem one. Problem one, then I first uh, call the get score method. Get scores method. You need to give him a vector v. Uh, this v you can call scores. Now, so we need to declare a variable first, right? So I declare a variable. Uh, vector of energy with a V. Okay. Now, uh, don't say V, sorry, call scores. Then I get scores, call this function, get all the scores, store in this vector named scores. Then I call the function print stats. And this function, you give him a vector of scores, it will print the stats. So you solve the first problem. Now solve the second problem, solve problem two. Problem two, you first, uh, you did a, a sentence, so string sentence, for example, you, you can call sentence, or you just call string s, right? Then you print out the message into a sentence, then, I will tell you if it is a parry drum. Okay. Then, as I see in S, okay. Now, I call the function if is parry drum. S then I will print out the message the sentence I will print out this sentence in double quotation marks. So I say the sentence I print out the double quotation marks first, right? Well, actually, I can print out here. Uh, remember, you will use the escape chart. Okay. Yes. Then I need to print out another double quotation marks. Is a parry draw. This is called a function is a paradigm. Else, I will print out the same sentence. I just print out is not a paradigm. So I copy is not a paradigm. Well, since your if statement only have one sentence, you don't have to put it in the brackets. So after you've done this, you will say you still can run your program. You see, successfully. Now, uh, for example, he said, in the sentence, I will say, tell you if it's a paradigm. I just say, Anna, this Anna is a paradigm. Why? Because it's always paradigm, because you call it paradigm, always return you true. So, uh, you really did not test the program. You just say, so far, you are okay. You say your function really, main function really call this is paradigm function. Okay? Now let us say get a scores. How to implement this get a scores? So I see uh, out into scores into negative uh, one to stop. You can give people a hint, right? Into scores into negative one to stop. So you will do uh, see. Score. Okay. Oh, well, 
in that case, I declare local variable first. For example, I declare local variable integer score. Okay, so I say in score if score greater than or equal to zero, right? Then what I'm going to do? I will add this score to the vector v dot push back. Score. This is you add the score to vector v. Okay. Well, score greater than or equal to zero, and then the score greater than or equal to zero. Now here, notice I did not put a validation like to check if the score is between zero and one hundred. You can uh, add the validation as not. Uh, you keep asking user to enter a valid score if his input is not, not in the uh, is more than one hundred. But if he enter active, it will be assumed he want to quit this input. Okay, so this do well loop first ask a user enter a score. Okay, then if this score is greater than or equal to zero, then you add it to the vector. Now, if, if uh, you keep doing this, as long as he enter the score is greater than or equal to zero. Equivalent if he input an active score, then this two will will finish. Uh, then your get scores method will finish. Then I will print out the stats. Print out the stats. Of course, I can uh, go through this vector, right, to get every element in the vector. So in this case, I can, for example, I can integer uh, size. Equal v dot size. That would be how many elements in v, right? That can you say now? Look at this, what is this error message? Probably I will use size t. See if this is better. Yeah, look like it says t. Okay. I equal zero. I less than size. I plus plus, okay. That means you step through vector. So what you will do, you will say, uh, you will always have a in integer minimum score. You call one hundred one. That this what the trick we used to before, max score equal negative one. Then total score equal zero, right? Then I will say if vector uh, i is less than mini score, then your mini score. Uh, mini score need to be updated. Mini score need to be updated equal vector vi, vi, I mean element vi. If vi is greater than max score, then you have to update the max score equal vi. No matter what, your total score plus equal vi. So basically, this for loop will step through all the element in the vector v, which where you store the scores. Then, for uh, you beginning, you assume the minimum score is one hundred one because we assume the user only input the score between zero and one hundred. So at the beginning. You assume the minimum score is 101, but if this minimum score, or you after you find that lower score, then you will update the minimum score. You assume at the beginning the maximum score is actually one. After you find the largest score, you will update the maximum score, and you always keep updating your total score. Then once this finishes, you only print out the information if the total score, uh, the number of scores is greater than zero. Okay, so if 
size uh, v data size which is size if size is greater than zero uh, is equal zero then you will see out there is low no test score okay else you will print out all these stats so the number of scores then you say told there are size scores okay then you print out the maximum the highest score is you will hit print out the max score then see out the lowest score is you print out the mini score then see out the average score is you will print out 1.0 multiply total score then divide by size okay maybe I need to print out a new line after each of this that will make it look better let me do one Now, so I print out all those scores. Now, let, let us uh, test. Every time you write a one, you test it. In those scores, in the like you want to stop. Let us enter 90, 100, uh, 80, 60, 70, then negative one. Now, there are five scores. Highest score is 100, lowest score is 60, average score is 80. Same cycle is correct. Now let's implement the function is parallelogram. Your book has an example uh, to do this work. However, in your book's example, it uh, implements several hyper functions. In this project, I want you just implement this one function is parallelogram. So you need to understand the book's example, then try to combine all those functions together. Uh, now let's see what we can do. We first declare a local variable integer left equals zero. This is left index of elements of Charles characters in sentence string. Okay, then you can say integer right equal sentence dot length minus one this is the right index of characters in sentence string now uh, basically the now we see here they don't like it so I cast it down to integer that's no problem uh, basically for example at the beginning left point to the first character in the string and the right is the index of the last character in the string. So I will compare the first character in the string and the last character in the string. So if they match, if they don't match, of course it's not a parallelogram. If it match, then increase left by one, reduce right by one, then continue to compare those two characters. So what I will do, as long as left is less than right, Then I will compare if the, those two charts are equal. Of course, we need to ignore the nine English letter characters. We need to ignore the white space. So what I'm going to do, as long as sentence not a letter, sentence uh, left. So basically, as long as his uh, at the left 
position, then the chart is not a ladder. Then what I will do, I will increase left by one. If left already equal the right, then you will return true. That means it is a paragraph. Then I do the same thing. As long as sentence is right, is not a letter, then I will reduce right by one. And if left equal right, then I will return true. Now, basically, after this two war loop, your left will be an index of a character that is a letter, and the right is also an index of a character that is a letter. Now, I need to compare these two uh, characters. If they are not the same, then it's not a paragraph. So if the sentence at the left position, uh, I need to convert it to uppercase. After converted to uppercase, not equal, convert the sentence at the right index to uppercase. If the latter equal, I will return false, which means is not a paragraph. If I don't return, I increase left by one, reduce right by one. Okay, as now. As uh, then I continue the loop, check the condition. As now the left still less than right, then again I first skip. So this this for loop skip or nine letters, nine English letters. Here also skip. Or line English letters. Then you compare if they equal, right? Uh, this, this comparison you ignore the case. This comparison will grow the case because you converted them both to uppercase first. Okay, now let us run the program. Since I already tested the first part of right, so I just interact you want a low score. Then you enter a sentence, I will tell you if it is a paradigm. I say a lot for a jar of tuna. We try this. Now notice. We're supposed to print out this sentence, but he print out A. He only print out A. That means I in input A lot for a jar of tuna. He only actually read A. What's wrong? Let us go back to the main function. OK, here is the problem. We use C in. Remember, C in, uh, he will stop read. When he try to read a string, he will stop when there is a white space. So we cannot just use C in. So I will use, can I use C in? So I try to use get line. Get line method. This get line method, I will type uh, uh, use C in and input S. Let's try if this works. Okay. So basically, try again. If I type negative one, oh, even worse, the sentence he didn't read anything. What happened? Because this get line will end by the new line chart. But when you be at the begin, when you read this negative one, you still have a new line uh, character in your input buffer. So we need to get rid of that. So what I'm going to do is I will call get a char method. Get rid of the new line char. 
the input buffer. Here, I suggest to go read your textbook. Talk about that the new line. Your te textbook has a new line method. Uh, as an example, you read that method. Say how he use call that method to get rid of what's ever left over uh, the new line characters in your input buffer. Okay. Now let's do this. Tap input again. Okay. A lot for a jar of tula. Now he said a lot for a jar of tula is a paradigm. I need to rerun the program to test uh, if I type something is not a paradigm. For example, hello world. Is hello world is not a paradigm. It seems like we did okay. 